to me, Graf is about entertainment. I think you're putting on a show. You're kind of putting your name out there. Ooh, it, is, okay. it, it is, man. It, all forms of hip hop are forms of entertainment. Mm. What you do is a form of entertainment, music, great dance, all that stuff. And Graf is another form, but it's it's it is a more it it has been known to be something in you know it's a subculture sort of in the background. You know, you're not meant to know who does it. Killer Killer Official dot com. Street Culture TV. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer podcast. I know these things like that. You sound like that. Oh, yeah, it sounds like, yeah, sweet, sweet, sweet. What's happening? Go on. Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer podcast. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for joining us as always. Transmitting live and direct, not in a normal place, but in a different place, a completely different place. Um, we're going to jump straight into this. We are in Hackney Wick for a very special, special, sir, for a very special celebration wait, wait. of my brother T's and his birthday. T sadly passed away last North year. North London King. North London King. Uh, so we thought we'd come down to the commemoration, the celebration of his birthday. And alongside yeah, me, uh, among hundreds of other people, is my brother Tickers. How you doing, brother? You right? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Right again? Oh, we're right again. Yeah, sorry, <laughs> right mate. Again. Had a couple of beers, so yeah. Yeah, and we're bubbling. Keep reminding me to hold a speaker up here. <laughs> and we're, in, we're also in the middle of the road. People, are, we're holding up traffic right now. That's how we traffic like Traffic stoppers, <laughs> come on. Roadblockers for tees. <laughs> Roadblockers! I mean. R.I.P. Sergio, man. Yeah, R.I.P. Tell, yeah, sure. tell us a little anecdote. Tell us a story about today. How's this, how's this impact on you? How's, how you feeling right now? Do you know what? A lot better, man. Obviously, when he passed away, like, I think I said it in my podcast originally, I hadn't seen him for a long time and we've become really good friends and close friends again through Graf, yeah. like we did the first time around in 2000, or 1999, sorry. Yeah. Brought us together, graffiti, and it, it brought us together again, fucking, well, I didn't see him from 2003 to 2001. Yeah. So the fact that we got back together through Instagram, people knock it, but you know what, I'll forever, forever be grateful for social media because it brought one of my best friends back into my life and yeah. we were inseparable again. We were just more than graffiti, we were out drinking again, going for food, like yeah. catching up. Going to like, raves. Yeah, man, yeah, come on, we can't <laughs> see one of your raves. Yeah, like I said, the Brixton one, Passion of the Titans back in the day, that's where we come as this time here, the beat boy, a bit more chilled out. Yeah. We weren't because we got chased out of the venue, so <laughs> out of the kebab shop, but you know, that's another story for another day. He was a mischief, man, both of you were yeah, mischief, weren't we, you? Well, listen, I'll put it on my stories the other day, like, we, it's like we never grew up, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's just a great guy and he's inspirational. He, he led me down a path 20 years ago of stuff that became famous, like there's photographs out there of stuff that we'd done years ago that were like, no one else was doing at our age, do you know what I mean? And now also, no one him. else had, you nah, know, he didn't have those flips. Nah, he had them. Like, yeah. And mine got taken by the powers that be when they knocked on my door one day and <laughs> came through my door one day, I should say. <laughs> but um, nah, yeah, it's the same, fucking nearly 20 years later, the same, He's, I've got a studio basically from his, what? sorry, a studio basically from his wise words and yeah. just doing, doing, doing my art thing. Yeah, he, he did, he teach it. He, said to you, look, you need to get a studio. Yeah, in. man. He was, he was there. Remember, he was constantly yeah. at me. He's like, I, wasn't, yeah. I didn't have the confidence. I don't know what it was. I was just, I don't know. And then I, even then, in, is it from his passing, I thought, Joe, you know what? I went down. I got sad. I got upset like a lot of people. Then mm. after a while, I was like, if, if anything, I've got to use this to my advantage, if I'm honest. And yeah, yeah. and he and he's inspires, he inspires me every day, if I'm honest. And like yeah. today, look at this. Turn yeah. out. You probably can't man. see it properly in the picture, but there's uh, hundreds of people and more coming, places. do you know what I mean? Yeah. And legends turning up Mad that I haven't seen for years. Like, turns in the yeah, fucking building. Yeah, man. The people <laughs> he looked up to, and he'd be so gassed right now for this. And yeah, this yeah. Is, so yeah, this is how this day come about. Yeah. I spoke to Jazz. She's organised it. Um, so I've had a lot going on that side of this, so f thank you, Jazz. For yeah. Should we get Jazz with? Jazz! Take on my ideas, yeah. So yeah, come fair in. play to her. Yeah, one right, minute. She's, she's busy. She's, she's busy. She's busy she's painting. Coming. Honestly, yeah, when we say this. There's a good. lot of people here right now. Yeah, man. All right, you know, yeah. big up Force, big up yeah. uh, Spill, right. all the Me MX guys. It's West London, South London, East London, yeah. everywhere, like everything. North London, obviously North, like it's his hometown, and it's yeah. just, yeah, it's, it's great CBM. to see, man. Yeah, man. It's Everyone, and it's DDS. Everyone's repping, bro. Yeah, Come yeah. on, and it's like, yeah, it's um, it's good to see six months on. And it's, the weather's shining. It's his birthday today. Well, it would have been his birthday, so it's yeah, like, beautiful. Yeah, beautiful thing, thing, you know. Yeah. What's going on with you? What's yeah, happening? Yeah, good man. I'm like, like I said, man. What life's like? It took a bit of a downturn like, around Christmas time because obviously, like, the, like of what happened. And um, yeah. but you know what? Life is life. And his family was here. His little boy was here earlier. Oh, stop you know it! What I mean, yeah, oh, yeah. You just missed him. Like, he's down here looking at Graf getting the fumes in there. He's brought like, you wait. He'll be terrorising London like in years to come. Do you know what I mean? So. Well, that's yeah. the thing, isn't it? Like, it's 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 uh, it's a, it's a passed on tradition. Yeah. Yeah. You know come I mean? on. I won't. Um, <laughs> 
Yeah, his wife's been very good and said that I can um, talk, tell him stories when he's getting older about <laughs> us growing up. So yeah, don't worry, I won't leave, no, I won't leave nothing out. <laughs> yeah, and the podcast really served that as well. I think it's you know, and this yeah. is something that's going to be happening. We're going to play the original yeah, uh, podcast without the pixelation, unedited. Uh, well, you become good friends, didn't you, from man? It was nice because yeah. I, like, I remember we putting it together, and he's like, oh, "No, I need you to be there." And I was like, "Nah," because he's. You've been away for so long. I was like, trust me, you're going to get on. So I've already done yeah. mine with you. I knew you've obviously already. And oh, we like, got on like hours yeah, on fire. I knew you would. Like, I knew you would. And he's just, he's, he's not hard to get on with. He's a good guy. Like, yeah. And you're a good guy. It was, it was, and it, it, after doing that, he felt more comfortable coming back to the London scene. He's yeah. been away for a while, do you know what I mean? And come yeah. on, legends never die. So It's amazing what feedback on a podcast can do to people. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, 100%. But, but he already had his lane. He'd already, but like you say, sometimes you need just that little G and a little bit more you know, little nudge, and then all of a sudden he yeah, was uh, man, explosive. He's it. He didn't talk, and he's just—he's articulate of what he says. He's an artist in a lot of ways, not yeah. just not just in graph. He's like—he thinks about it bigger picture in, in a lot of ways of life. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. always pushing boundaries, pushing people, and he proved that he's a successful man from yeah. what he went through when he was younger to where he was when he came to the end. He's just yeah, he's just—he's an inspiration for anyone out there. Do you know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, go on, right, give, uh, give give Jazz a call. You give her a call now. Jazz. Come in now. <laughs> she's on her way. She's on her way. She's running now. She's running. She's running. Come on, come on. 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 So, yeah. I've been lazy, so she's done she's worked wonders. She's worked <laughs> wonders. Well, I think we all need it. Yeah. yeah we need it. And I think Tease would have really appreciated yes. everyone coming down, For you real. know, whether you knew him or not. Yeah. Um, he's somebody that always wanted to reach out to new people. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Important times and beautiful times. So we're very lucky and blessed, as I say, to have the original rushes of uh, Tease's uh, podcast with me. Unedited, no pixelation. Uh, although we're big fans of pixelation for the nation, for the graph generation, we are going to go bare bones on this. And uh, thank you guys. I'm going to take some bits and bobs of this and make it one hell of a piece again. Good man, Kells. Yeah, we go. Big up as always. Cheers, good man. Thank yes, you. Yes. IPTs, we love you, brother. Enjoy yourselves, people. Watch on. Easy. Tease forever. Yeah. Tease forever. Right, cool. <laughs> Yo, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Keller Podcast, live and direct, Central London Essentials, you need to be, choose to be, want to be on every day. All right, see, bring it all together, all in one for the intro. Yeah, big shout out to graffitikings.co.uk. Hold tight, all the regulars. You know what you're doing, I don't need to mention it more than once. Television app, go get it. There's a bunch of stuff going on this year. Trust me, you need to get involved. Inside the house is a gentleman that, without question, was one of the many names which I saw lurking about on certain journeys all across London, um, in, in all city style DDS, the awesome, he's inside the place. How are you, my brother? I'm all right, mate, I'm all right. Well, how's that for an intro? I mean, look, like, where, do I be where <laughs> I the hell do we begin? It, where do we begin? Where do we begin? I mean, like, for, for real, we had a little chat before we jumped on. Mm -hmm. um, just kind of setting the world to rights, weren't we? Mm -hmm. This graffiti game is very, uh, it's, it's very, um, it's got layers and peeling them back is quite hard. It's, 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 it's a personal thing for people, isn't it? It is, man. It is. There's a reason, like, why writers do graffiti. And I think if you actually break it down, no matter what walk of life they're from, there's a lot of similarities, you know, as for the reasons that they get into it. You know what I mean? So well, you think each person have that? There's a there's a certain um, uh, creative DNA that is 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 within everybody that that does graph. There's a certain thing that they all relate with. Yeah, I think there's um, a need to be noticed with writers. You want to you want to put your name out there. You don't mm. feel like you're getting the recognition maybe in your walk of life. Mm. You might be the black sheep of the family. Mm. You might not be able to express yourself at school the way that you want to, uh, could be anything. It could be something that you've gone through in your life, you know, that makes life difficult and you just want to escape. Mm. escape. It is escapism. escapism. It's, an alternate, it's an alter ego that you yeah. create for yourself. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah, man. I don't know, like, if, if I could just talk quickly about, you know, my early sort of 
Memories of Graf. Get in. Yeah, Here man. we go. Off to the races. What I tell you about <laughs> to go in on this one, Killer Killer podcast. <laughs> He's talking. Let's go. Right. Yeah, so I grew up in Manor House, which is near sort of Finsbury Park, Haringey, uh, Stoke Newton sort of areas. And uh, there was a lot of graph around there. Mm. I don't need to say who, who, what sort of writers were around those areas. But calibre. Serious calibre, yeah. It was like the birthplace of a lot of shit. Yeah. And um, my dad used to work in factories in Tottenham ah. sort of area, like uh, clothing factories. And, uh, yeah, there was a route that we used to go from Manor House to Tottenham. And we always used to be stuck in traffic down this road. We only had one car, so we'd have to, like, drive my dad. My dad would drive to work, and then my mum would drive me and my sister to school yeah. the way back. On the way to driving my dad to work, there was always traffic down this one road. And it was towards Tottenham. Yeah. And uh, on the wall, there was, like, tags. I must have been about seven or eight or nine, something like that. And my dad used to refer to his boss at work as the governor. Right, the governor mm. said this, the governor said that, governor's a prick, you know, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> and I remember looking at the wall in traffic, I'm telling you, it's like eight, nine, seven, something like that. And it used to say, someone put a governor tag on the wall and it was governor, governor, governor. And there was like, I think there was figs and uh, stacks reaches nearby. Oh, so how, long, how old would you been at this time again? About seven, eight or nine, probably seven or eight, I would say. Yeah. Come a little closer to yeah. the mic. Just it's seven or eight. Was doing. Yeah. So seven or eight? Yeah, man. So yeah, that was my earliest thing because he used to say governor and it was such a unique word. He was he was the only one that really said it. And I saw it on the wall, G-U-V-N-A. Anyway, so this boss was one hell of a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This yeah. boss was up. <laughs> yeah, this boss was up. Yeah. And um, yeah, anyway, so that was my earliest memory. And also around Haringey, there was a lot of like... Um, it was quite a Greek area, a Greek Cypriot area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it turned into like Turkish Cypriots and Turks. Mm. And then it turned into Kurdish uh, community, mm -hmm. a bit of a Kurdish community. And they used to have a like sort of group called the PKK. I don't know if you ever remember the graffiti that they used to do around Haringey. Wow, wow, wow. So that what date would that have been? Early nineties, I would say. Comment below, guys. You know. Yeah, early nineties. But early 90s. not that I have any sort of affiliation with these guys, <laughs> even though I'm dressed like this. But um, uh, basically, I just used to read the writings on the wall. I was always drawn to it, and it just be you know where McDonald's is in Haringey. Yeah. I don't know if you know where that is. Yeah. It was a big wall just past the station, just before you turned, and they wrote in big red paint, PKK, da 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 da, da massive, like all the way down this wall. And I was reading out every letter. And my dad was talking to my mom in the front of the car, and he was like, "What the fuck is he reading?" <laughs> Yeah. My mum was like, I don't know, looked out the window and was like, he's reading the writing on the wall. Do you think that's so, funny how people that aren't into graffiti don't actually observe things like that? It always baffles me. Yeah. How do they not see the things that are yeah. fucking great that we see? It's true, but you know, graffiti has always been people expressing themselves on walls. You know, the, the cave graffiti, you know, back in back in the day, I've been to Egypt, I've been in the tombs, yeah. I've seen ancient Greek graffiti in the in the tombs. Really? I've seen the Roman graffiti. So yeah. you've really gone in on it. You've Yeah, man, it. I've analysed it all, man. You know, I've seen like proper old school, like early hundreds graffiti in the tombs in Egypt. And it's pristine. You know, people felt a need to carve their name in stone and date it. Um, which is amazing and it just stands the test those people are long long gone <laughs> you know? oh, it's amazing that, yeah 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 exactly and that is the point isn't it yeah because uh, you, that used to be the only point of reference that was to point things back to certain times of history and what was going on and that still is the case now that's it, yeah. But going back to what I was saying, yeah, sorry. it's it's literally not. It's, it's literally like the the that PKK graffiti. The reason why we as writers do our graffiti, we want to leave our mark, so that it, it's there, sort of like after we're gone as well. I, I feel that you know because I haven't done graph. I came out of it for eighteen years, and since coming back into it and going on Instagram and stuff, I've had new generation writers sending me pictures of stuff that I did years ago, mm. like twenty years ago, and I'm just like, man, I can't believe that's still there. And then yeah. also my mate Kieran got to we passed away um Rest in people peace. sending me pictures of his stuff that is on rooftops still and that is that to me is the did he die from graffiti no he got he got mixed up in other stuff other stuff yeah things he really should well, i might just add don't try any of this at home okay this is not a spectator this is purely a spectator sport yeah do not try this at home we're not we don't condone it over here <laughs> yeah it's true, <laughs> it's true. <laughs> um yeah so like yeah just there's similarities, you know, Kieran is passing, his graffiti's still around me, 
you know, I might as you know not being around for eighteen years and seeing my stuff still around, people sending me stuff, you know, and then also going to places like Egypt and seeing this ancient graffiti. It's like even if you go mm. to Salisbury Cathedral, you see like uh, graffiti from like the fourteen, fifteen hundreds scratched into the walls of the church whoa, inside. Whoa. Seriously, man. But those people they're not remembered, but because their name is there, that's that's what I love about graffiti. Mm. And it's like it was just the same things that I saw. You know, growing up, I don't know why it just fascinated Let's me. Let's get you know? a bit more into this this history referencing because because um, you're probably the first writer, graffiti artist, has come on. I'm trying to think if there's anybody else that has gone so deep into the scriptures and the history references mm. of medieval, archaic Egyptian graffiti. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's people leave their mark. People feel a need to leave their mark to show. Back in the day, it would, you know, like the cave paintings, I think they're in France, aren't they? Mm. Um, you know, Catacombs kind of shit. Yeah, yeah, you know, like uh, scenes of like hunting and yeah. things like that. And it's even like hieroglyphics and you actually see Egyptian hieroglyphics. Yes. It's t- trying to it's tell the future generations, you know, that find these tombs, what life was like for them, how they built the, the, the pyramids, you know, how they farmed, how whatever, you know. So South, South America as well got crazy... Um, uh, what's it called? Mayan, Mayan kind yeah. of scriptures and stuff mm-hmm. that, that, that tell the, the tales of time and. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And um, for me, that's really why I was drawn to graffiti. I mean, the first writer that I ever noticed is someone that never gets mentioned. Uh, I think he used to write another thing as well, which was his main tag. But the one that I spotted was because I used to cheat at school. Yeah, all the time. My mum is like, stop cheating at school, stop cheating at school. Mm, mm. There's a writer called Cheat. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember, remember him? Of course, yeah. Is that money? Dude. Is that money? Yeah, yeah I've met him I once. I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's, he, he was everywhere. Yeah. And Manor House has like four exits I to the station. I tag so well. <gasps> Bad, literally C-H-E-A-N-A-T. But had that lowercase vibe. Yeah. lowercase, right? Yeah, man. Wow. And analysing hand style, I love bombing i love hand styles i think it's just a quick easy way to get up and the more style mm. you can get in it within a certain amount of speed mm. you know is 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 a beauty it's a mm. it's a real art form it's really underappreciated by a lot of the outs the general public mm. you know but it's like again ancient graffiti like writing back in the day you know when you see scriptures it's really classy the mm. calligraphy and all that kind of stuff but you know, with graffiti, we kind of use different utensils. You know, like our pens, we do use chisel tips. You know, like mm. a fifteen mil pen, thirty mil pen. Uh, but then we got like the round nibs and stuff. Mm. It's what style you can get within it. But mm. anyway, going back to cheat, he was the one. You know, that never gets mentioned, but he just had a bad fucking hand style. And he was the one that I noticed, cheat, 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 everywhere. I don't know if he grew up around that area as well. Uh, mm. But then obviously you had others like sub. Of course. Fucking his original tag with the S that went around like that and the U and the yeah. B. That, oh, you know, bro, like that, that was just the shit, honestly. That was like, my favourite... St- I've got to admit, that was my favourite era of graph in terms of t- tagging and style. Mm. You know what I mean? They really came with it and it yeah, just man. looked so slick. And you know, like... And then there was just one dude around my era, which was Shoe 2, that just yeah. literally just... He was like an enigma. Like He had every bridge outside the station at Finsbury Park and it just looked like something that just weren't like anything else. Mm. And then you see his hand style. And my thing was when I was started writing, I'm probably best known for bombing mm. and my hand style, um, was I would try and copy everyone's hand style. And if I got to a writer's whose hand style I could not copy, that meant they had a sick hand style. Because if you can copy it, do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, because Shu Two has this mad That's as I've so tried cool. it, he, I just can't fucking do it. He does this S like that mm. and it comes up like that and then it's choo, 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 and it's a big T that droops down yeah. like this. And then I'm like it's just fucking insane. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. it's just a bad hand style. But then nowadays you see like him doing these other hand styles and they're even crazier, they're mm. completely different. But mm. you know, it's just mad. Some like, people are just wired yeah. right in the right way differently. Yeah, cool. man. So you've got like trying to think of other hand styles that I, you know, teachers' hand styles pretty bad. Diets, D, mm. that comes up like that. Mm. You know, you, you can see what they're thinking in their hand style. Talk to me about the hand style and what, what you think they're thinking. <laughs> it's speed. You know, if you're a bomber, mm. you, you're thinking about speed, but it's not just about putting your name up and as quickly as possible and, you know, with no style. It's, it's, it's about how much style you can put into that tag. You know, in a short space of time. Short space of time. You look at idea, and I, you, this is just my mentality. Oh, mate. You, this is my mentality. Yeah. He writes two. He writes yeah. idea and oh dear. Yeah. yeah, right. I has to go like this. 
Yeah, mm. da, 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 and the rest is the same. Yeah. If you write Saudia, which is a bad tag as mm. well, yeah, the O is rounded. It, it's quicker. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying? But I don't know. Maybe that's maybe that's what there I'm thinking. There you go, bro. Yeah. Like he's the diff- in my, right. This is just my opinion. Yeah, and I don't know whether it's because he's he's chosen that lane and that's what he's going to do to the max because mm. he's a bad boy. Right, uh, you know, pizza too. Mm. I mean, some of the stuff that I've seen in the he's past. He's a bomber, man. He's a bomber, and he's been perfected it. I went out bombing with him on the lines when he was killing it with Welsh. Mm. And oh, uh, wow. back in the early 2000s, 2002, 2003 mm. sort of time. And he just came out of like retirement, probably a bit like what I did. I don't know, it probably weren't as long as sort of I've been away. It felt like it because he wasn't really around in my day when I was starting up. Mm. He battered the shit out of every lion. He literally battered it and he literally made everyone else kind of take note. Step up. Yeah. Step up. The Little Mets got fucked. It was on Crime Watch. It was all over the fucking place. In graffitism magazines and, you know, everyone was going out for him. And even Rust was coming out with us. Welsh was coming out. Uh, and again, we don't condone this. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> but yeah, we was riding the lions all day, every day. Wow. You know, and it was just like, he just, he was the one that just had every carriage man it was just relentless yeah i remember this it was fucking i was coming in at the tail end of that to be fair mm. my my world started and stuff but you were you were everywhere yeah man i used to get about like yeah, yeah i used to live like I, I got into graph sort of in finchley areas i grew up in like one end of the northern line mm. which was the barnet branch mm. Uh, yeah i went to school there was a lot of writers at my school there was a lot of history of like uh good quality writers, you know. Um, Do you think that helps? A, a, does that help cultivate? Mate, it's, it spread like a disease through my school. It was the weirdest thing because you get kids, the mentality of school children is you go to school, you want to be like the bigger kids. If the bigger kids are into graph <laughs> and there's a whole year below them, some of them are going to want to be like <laughs> that cool kid. And that's it. Just It probably still goes through my school today. It's just <laughs> mad. And there was just one dude in my in my area that was just absolutely batter in it at the time I, I came into graph at 98 and it was you probably know what i'm gonna say is zonk mm. you know I, I, he just had that cr- he just had that crossover appeal as well you know it's sort of like what 10 foot has today mm. if if instagram yeah. was around back in the day when zonk yeah. was smashing it in like 99 i remember that crossover between 99 and 2000 we used to copy we used to try to copy his 99 under his tag and then we tried to copy his 2000 because it was so weird going from 99 mm. to 2000 because it was 98, 98, uh, 98, 99 and it went to 2000 you wouldn't write zero, zero. you had to do the four things and mm. he just made it look wicked it was like two and the zeros just got a little bit bigger and he just had his hand style as well could never do his Z and his K yeah. it was just fucking bad you know yeah yeah and, and Z is like a it's an interesting one because it can be too thin mm. the the cross lines and it's all just like bunched flattened mm. he like you say he he all those angles of the k with the z and mm. the end like these are these are different switchings of letters and he's just managed just he's always managed to space it out and look just like all men to be there all dancing together it's mad isn't it that's it man i mean i got in trouble once at school my mate uh, the writer I, I can't really say too much we might have to bleep this out after because i might be baiting myself up but there was a guy that i started writing who got me into writing who wrote and he went to mm. my school. Mm. That's the bit you can block out if okay. you want. <laughs> well, just that um, name. Just, uh, yeah, just yeah. a bit that where I say my school. Um, and basically, he was like scratch king on the northern lines. He had every window, etc. And he used to be, he was more advanced than all of us. And he came into school. He's like, oh, yeah, Song's done this new thing in Kilburn, some rooftop. I think it was in Kilburn. And he was like, come on, let's bunk off school and go and check it. And we was like, all right, then fuck it. Let's just go and bunk off school. We bunked off school together. I got in trouble. I ended up getting suspended from school for that. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's get it straight. So you would bunk school for a whole day could, to go and see One Piece. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. It was just when Zonk did something, man, it just... Uh, he Perforated. To me... <sighs> Yeah, man, I think he had that, he definitely had that crossover appeal because there was a lot of riots in my school and the normal kids that didn't, not normal, but like the kids that weren't into graph, they, uh, you know, would never talk about anyone else's graph apart from Zonk. Zonk did something, mm. people spoke about mm. it. It was weird. I think it might have just been a rooftop because of positioning, mm. just the quality of the work. It was mm. always bang on. It was neat and tidy. And then it was just everywhere. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You just could not go anywhere without seeing his, his work. So As you grew up into it, did was this a s- slow increase of work rate 
or was it that you weren't a, you? Because to think about look, back then, man, like the he must have been out every night, every afternoon, every opportunity. Mm. Like a lot of you guys in the nineties mm-hmm. or late nineties into the early noughties, the the amount of turnaround you would have had to have done. Did you ever forecast it being such? Because it was, must have been a lot. Mm. What the work that we did? Yeah, yeah, man, it was relentless. And you know what? I've got back into it recently, and if you check my Instagram page, you'll get a taste of what it was like. And people, I've had people say to me, "Man, you're doing a lot of shit. Da 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 da. You're, you know, going a bit crazy." <laughs> and I said, "This is nothing compared to what it was like. Mm. You'd be out all day, every day. Everything was a. It was just normal. You got on the bus if you was on your own, if your mates, if the bus was packed, you put a reach out. You got on the train, it's packed, empty with your mates. Without put a reach up." outsize reach everything you know night times walking tracks it was just normal to take the sh- instead of walking the street home like you would walk tracks it was normal it was really? there was so no, that's totally normalized totally normal it was the weirdest thing you know if you got chased normal you expected it you know if you was traveling the lines all day every day you never had a ticket you know it was just relentless it was all day every day it's the only way you can get up in london and you know the only person that's done something that really has taken it to the next level is 10 foot you know Dude is on an... I don't understand how he's doing what he's doing. Mm. I mean, he just must be so brazen. Mm. And uh, I did something recently outside Ox, uh, Bond Street Station in front of... Um, just literally right outside the station, just walked across mm. and just did a throw-up. I just wanted to see what people's reactions were. A group of people just take out their phone, start filming me. It's like right near Selfridges. And it's just like... I think that's what 10 foot must do. It's just that brazen, like, I'm just going to do it. If you have the confidence to do it and then just walk off, mm. that's the best way to get up because then you get the killer reaches that, you know, as soon as you know what I'm saying to you outside your house, you know, you want, as soon as you come out of the station, it's better to have one reach in a quality spot than maybe a hundred down the road, mm-hmm. down side roads. Mm-hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? You know, mm-hmm. I see 10 foot coming out of Hammersmith, of Hammersmith station. And your dude has just gone fat cat crown of every pillar. Yeah, Mad. yeah, I do find that interesting. The human psyche, and this is me speaking as a, a mere pedestrian, is if you were to see someone do it, as much as the authorities don't like it, it has become normalised, and in many respects, to the to to the authorities, mm. it's become it's it's. I guess it's a problem that. Is is almost a non-entity. It's hard to, it's hard to coin it. You can't expect because if they were to meet ten foot, they probably want an autograph. They probably <laughs> want true. a photo. It's true. You know what I mean, it's like it's <laughs> the, it's such a weird. And just going back to the medieval times of doing you know, back in the day stuff, you know, I'm sure there was these dilemmas. I mean, Cornbread, for instance, he he's been podcast. He says exact same thing. The police wanted a photo. He wanted they wanted to know who the guy was the, mm. in Philadelphia that tagged the elephant in the zoo. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the more it's publicised and the more exposure it's getting, more it's everywhere. It's it's a quite an uncontrollable. Uh, um, movement, isn't it? Hundred percent, man. I mean, back when I was just kind of the end of my sort of writing career 2003 four um the name around town was banksy mm. you know 2002 sort of at times you're like i'm gonna tap out around that yeah. <laughs> <laughs> clearly gone for the wrong you stop get nicked yeah. by the police yeah. do you know banksy yeah, 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 no yeah. i don't know fucking banksy yeah. <laughs> you know uh you met me though so, yeah, so yeah, I, you know, yeah I'm, I'm good <laughs> yeah, I, yeah but now it's 10 foot yeah. you know and before yeah. that but even it's the guy that killed it in my era was tox he mm. was the king you know wow the dude fucking killed it he paid a heavy price as well from what Mm. i hear you know and the dude just stayed true to his you know game he still does Mm. whatever you know uh, and um i don't think anyone ever matched him on the underground Mm. i might be wrong from people before my era i know acrid had a good go Mm -hmm. but that was before my time um but yeah tox absolutely killed it but you know people nowadays want to meet 10 foot but i don't i don't know if you saw the the Sky special, the tube where Tox was on it, yes, and the, the driver goes, "Oh, if I ever meet him, I'm going to give him a good yeah, kick." I I wanna, I've seen the video. You know, yeah. It's on YouTube, the, right? Yeah, yeah, that's the difference mm. I think with mentality today compared to back then. That's right. You know, and I think that helps writers today get up more. But I think writers are a little bit hesitant to be so brazen, and I get it. I get it, but to me, graph is about entertainment. I think mm. you're putting on a show. You're kind of putting your name out Ooh, there. Okay. It is, it is, man. All forms of hip hop are forms of entertainment. Mm. What you do is a form of entertainment, music, break dancing, all that stuff. And graph is another form, but it's 
it's it is more it, it's been known to be something in, you know it's a subculture sort of in the background you know you're not meant to know who does it mm. and so on and so on but times have evolved instagram has changed graph mm. massively yeah I, I, and i was thinking about this the other day like um there's there's as technology moves forward there's kind of no escaping the inevitability that at any point in this world everyone's going to know where everyone is at any point. Mm. We're already policing ourselves with video cameras everywhere we go. Like you say, you're going to do a tag. Everyone wants your selfie. Everyone wants mm. a video. Everyone likes to see you do it. It's like there's no, there's no mystique in the world anymore. Mm. It's true. Right? To meet writers back in the day, I probably need to jump in there and say a story. That's probably a good, good jump-off point. You know, back when I was writing, if you wanted to meet legends mm. you had to be out there and it had to be literally just like one of them split moments that you was in the right place at the right time and you blew your mind because yeah. you met them and the <gasps> first first yeah. writer i ever met that was of any note real note yeah uh was i'm going to mention one that i kind of briefly met but he's not who i'm going to talk about another writer that gets forgotten is cancer 143 was it ca cancer oh, 143 okay. i don't know if you remember him no. he used to hang around with range and crime sort of archway ways oh. and Mm. I'll have to look up. Cancer one four three. Yeah. BTA. Okay. Um, yeah, he. I met him briefly. We went. We never really did any graph together, but I just went out a couple of times with him. Um, but anyway, the first real writer I met went to meet Steez, the man Steez at no. Highbury with a writer called uh, Cube, and basically he went and picked up a whole load of paint. Went to Finchley Central. We're heading to Golders Green, and we're at the bus stop. And there's this dude standing there. We had like raw mail sacks full of paint. And I was helping Cube take it home. Amazing. And this dude is just standing at the bus stop. It was night time. Mm. And um, he goes, oh, you boys right? And we're like, yeah, we're telling what we write. I was like, what do you write? And he goes, slam. And I'm just like, oh, my days. It's just literally <sighs> mental. Yeah. Just Keep on. To, I'll just pick them up later. Yeah. <laughs> so we get on the bus. And I'm up on the northern lines at the time. I just started hitting like all the northern line carriages. And... Uh, Literally, we're talking about Graf. He had some pictures on him, like from trains he just painted with another mm. writer. Anyway, so we're chatting. I think he came to meet his bird. I haven't verified this story because it's been a long, long time. Mm. It's been about 20 years ago now. And um, yeah, he was meeting his girl, and I think she came from up north. I mean, I'm like 14, 15, mm. and we're just talking Graf the whole time. And yeah, it was just fucking mad. He gave me his number. Uh, he put me in RD and yeah man I wasn't back to school I was like the man do you know what I mean you know it was just fucking bad and then he's I don't know if you speak with slam or anything that's one dude you've just got to get on here I I have walked many worked in many sort of lines of work written with a lot of writers I haven't met all the writers that I've wanted to meet no, he's one of my heroes man it'd be uh, amazing uh, we'll, we'll have to see dude he's fucking amazing honestly uh, one day got, hmm. One day. Quite I mean, there's so many writers, and it goes without saying, like, I like to think as a fan first, mm. representing on here, uh, I do my best. Mm -hmm. But it's not to everybody. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. for everybody. Yeah, I get that. I get that, man. But, yeah, that was pretty cool, like, meeting, meeting him and then going out on some missions. And, you know, when you meet, you have to be, like, for him to take note in me when I was that young, it meant a lot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It really did. And I, imagine, yeah. I, I used to hang around with a lot of writers that were a lot older than me. Um, and it's the same as like footballers who play football or even what you do in your craft. Mm. It's like if you hang around with people that are good, it's you become happen. you yeah. become better, yeah. And yeah. you know, you improve. But what's you know, the most, what's the, very quickly, segue, what, what's the thing that you learn early on the most that you'll never forget? Like Slam or Cancer, any of those guys, Steez, showed you and you're just like, oh, I'll never forget that in a hurry. Techniques. Techniques, it's just, I don't know. It's Painting. Just, Bombing, man. I just yeah. loved bombing. I, every writer that I saw uh, write is just... You get some writers that had a really cool hand style, but they were very slow at putting it up. Mm. And then you just had some that just crazy quick and quality was there mm. it's just on point and just Born you know where amazing. to put your reach as well you know it's not just down you know down here on the side of the whatever you know mm. it's like there where everyone's gonna see mm. it you know quality you know there's a tag mm. out here mm. um I don't know if I should say it, if it baits you up, but you can... It'll bait me up. Yeah, <laughs> the mean attack. Yeah. You know, it's just fucking... Yeah. As soon as you see it, you're just like... You, you could see a thousand tags around it. My eyes getting drawn to that. It's totally. like... In Barnet, there was a prime tag on an electricity box and gold and paint. it's that. Yeah, it's that. Just one quality reach. You know, he never really bombed yeah. it during my time, but that gold prime reach, it was there for fucking ages. Mm. And it was just like... Firstly, I didn't know who it was. I wanted to read it. Mm. 
And then it's just the execution of it and then finding out who he is, seeing his old stuff around West London, and it's exactly the same, you know. And it's, it's, it's just pattern. a stamp. It's a mad pattern. It, and, yeah, that pattern being, you know, we we see one, we see the next, we see the next, and then already you've got the bug. One one thing that you've highlighted there, which I think holds very true, is in a in a world full of congestion and noise mm-hmm. and, and trying to um, uh, observe as much as you can... Yeah, graffiti can be a clusterfuck. And to the untrained, Mm -hmm. you're just seeing squiggles. But then you see one, and it just does it. Mm -hmm. And then it unlocks all these other, ah, now I understand. It's almost like an entry hole. That's it, yeah. And then you understand all the tags. It's mad, isn't it? Portal, yeah, man, Mm. definitely. And, you know, you should always strive. I think in anything that you do, as soon as you stop striving to be better at your craft, you're not interested anymore and you should just stop. I think that's what it is. You see it. If, keep going back to football. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I'm a Man United fan, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. And the football quality has gone down. But back in the day, if you got to play for United, you played for United. If you weren't good enough, you were kicked out the mm-hmm. door. You see the, the quality isn't there anymore. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I don't know. I just think like with, for me with writing, I kind of reached a point and then kind of plateaued. It wasn't that it plateaued. It, was, it gets serious. I think between the ages of 14 and 18, you're like learning your craft mm. but it's how much you get caught in that period how much shit you get you know have you got a family that allows mm. you to graph as well mm-hmm. that's a big thing are they going to kick you out of your house you're going to be homeless you it's have a to journey do... of the sperm this thing you it know it is I mean? man it really is and it's like you know when you hit 18 19 that's when you get good and that's those are the crunch years if you're mm. going to be prolific like not like me like other people between nine, 18 and sort of 25 that's your crunch time and that's mm. where you really put you know the stamp down this is who i am you know but what about the consequences because you say 18 19 i would say in many examples that have been on a podcast or whatnot i think 18 to maybe 26 27 these are prime years like yeah. a footballer would be you know mm-hmm. um but what are the consequences if you go that full all city i mean there is there's a lot of psychological things that you carry mm-hmm. respectfully you mm-hmm. know some people don't but you know they there are consequences, aren't there? I think there's different kinds of writers as well that don't want to be as prolific. They kind of improve the quality of their work and they go down, I'm going to do less, but way better quality, which is sick mm. because you're improving your craft still in your, in, your, in your own way. But if you're a bomber like what I was and, you know, like certain other people... You have to go, you have to be prepared to go to jail, 100%. You have know. you been to jail? No, I haven't been to jail. Um, the whole time I was writing pretty much from, I got kicked out of school when I was about 15 and a half, so about six to seven, eight months before my GCSEs. And probably from the age of 16, I was pretty much homeless. So I used to stay at my nan's sometime back in Manor House. Uh, but I was like sofa surfing for like two, three years. And it made life very hard mm. because you're thinking about food. You're thinking about where mm. you're going to sleep. Mm. It's a good way to get up yeah, being yeah. homeless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it really is. Yeah, yeah. You know. You're completely off grid. Yeah, completely off grid. Um, but it, it's a hard way of life. And, you know, once you get to that age of like 18, 19, you start thinking, you know, meeting girls and so on. You start thinking like... You know, do I do the right thing? You know, settle down, get a job, this, that, and the other. Or do I do the right thing? Yeah, do I do what <laughs> I want to do? And you know, like it's it, 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 it nearly killed me, man, to 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 quit graft the way that I did. I ended up moving out of London for ten years, and uh, yeah, it really. Yeah, we're all was, speaking in retrospect right now. Yeah, right? I mean, it was it was tough. You know, it was really tough to give up something that you love, but you know, in hindsight, it, I would have stuck at it. I really would have, and. I would have been prepared to go to jail 100% for what I what I believed in. I mean, I was smashing yards. I was hitting trains, insides. Mm. I'm quite brazen because I play on, like, the confidence thing, you know, to mm. do stuff in front of people. Yeah, I've heard about this. You know, just to get up. And, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be in, your er- in that area. I don't care if it's daytime or whatever. I'm not going to be on that train. I'm not going to be on that bus without putting a reach up. Because mm. it's a waste. Do you know what I mean? It's that's I'm a writer. So mm. I'm going to write on shit. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, get what I'm saying. So, but anyway, going back to what I was saying is, yeah, if I, I think if you're going to go between that 18 to 25, 26, 27 period, you have to be willing to go to jail. You have to be willing to pay the consequences, the fines, the bullshit, all of that. But the writers that do go through that, they get, you know, put, in history as legends you know they're remembered as legends and as writers that's what we all want and anyone that says otherwise is talking shit yeah it's like a yeah. jazz mentality it's like people always remember the the, the, the kings they always remember the legends mm. don't they mm-hmm. 
like even even the ones that do wrong or do bad or you know go against the grain mm -hmm. that makes them even more notorious that's it yeah. yeah and it's like but that's what writing is man uh, to me that's what it is we start getting into it to it's a mischievous act that generally boys do girls do it as well uh but boys will be boys and they're always doing bad shit <laughs> naughty shit and uh it, if you can create i mean there's a lot worse things you can get into as graph you know that's what that's kind of like the gripe i had with my parents growing up was that they hated me doing graph but i had mates that went on to hard drugs very young they went down the you know robbing houses route all that kind of stuff and you know that's way that's way more dangerous mm. and so on than graffiti graffiti is like it's actually a cool thing you know like you want to draw you want to write your name you know so much can come from that you know mm. they teach you in school you pick gcses and you know you can pick art but you draw shit you don't want to draw if you do something you want to do like for instance draw what you want to draw it can only go one way unless you're going to become an artist mm. do you know what i mean and once mm. you're an artist it can go in you've seen so there's a lot of writers i won't mention them but mm. they've gone into other things yeah, 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 yeah. i'll mention one because he's quite open it's like panic yeah you know what he's doing big up panic yeah big okay. up panic man and you know he's doing his own thing and uh it's going well for him and he deserves it because he's put in the work do you know what i mean <laughs> Take the time. This is flying. Um, uh, yeah, Panic's one of those guys that definitely have made the transition into that more creative space of exhibition. Also, big up our bots, big up Ein, big up yeah, Ein as Teach, well. big up everybody mm -hmm. that Teach. you know, and then younger that are coming through and starting that way as well. Because look, the 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 hierarchy. Um, journey that you've got to go through as a writer that's constantly changing isn't it mm -hmm. i mean regardless of what we're talking about here there is a, a change of attention on a lot of things and like you say you learn so much and you just kind of want to actually there has to be a return at some point you've got to try and find your yeah what your return is going back to what i was saying like for me stopping when i was like 18 19 you know it, it makes my day that people remember me honestly it really does it means a lot and it's the best time of my life was writing it was the best time i had total freedom no mm. responsibilities you know the credit you get for uh, you know the chases and all that kind of stuff is amazing but it, going back to what we were saying about going between that 18 and 25 period willing to take all that shit from the police you know getting arrested prison so on and so on family whatever mm. you know making certain sacrifices as well you know you have some people that go down the route of work they save up for things you know mm. that's your work in my opinion and if you've done if you've paid if you've paid your dues man you should be allowed to earn a living from it mm. and i'm happy that I see certain people mm. making a living from it because I wouldn't want to see them doing something that they hate when they've mm. put in, you know, that's your years for experience. Yeah. Is between the ages of 18 and really 30, that's where you apply, learn your trade and then you apply your trade after it from mm. experience. And, you know, you see a lot of people that, you know, back in the day wouldn't have had that opportunity, but now you do get that opportunity. Mm. It's still hard. It's, it's still know, hard. It's a different hustle. It is, man. It's very hard. But anyway, good luck to anyone that has paid their dues and is earning money from this game because they deserve it. Yeah, they do. More than some. Um, what is it about graph that makes a young person... Oh, you said something, you know, earlier, you'd go out and tag, you'd go out and walk tracks, you'd go and do anything at that time and it, was just, it just became the norm. But what makes that pride? What makes that... Because you're not just putting up a tag for you. Of course you are, but mm -hmm. it's actually the movement of things. It's like to say you are a graph writer, particularly in the inner cities, that's like a real thing, isn't it? Yeah. And, and still is, curiously, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Definitely, man. For me, it was, it was my home life that made me want to write because... Definitely, 100% on the black sheep of the family. <laughs> 100%. I know a lot of writers are the black sheep of the family. Um, the pixelation don't do them justice. <laughs> you know, it really, it really is a pit. The being the black sheep of the family. I tell you, I've gone from one end of the spectrum to the other, and within my family, I'm still the black sheep of the family. Really, so, really. Yeah, man. And it's like you know, some, sometimes you just don't click with their ethos, you know. And it's I got nothing against you know 
what they You've got brothers and sisters? Yeah, I've got a sister. Yeah, she's gone down the university route. She's a high flying banker, not banker, what is she works in the foreign investment bank yeah. group. And but, 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 but um, what do they think when they hear that? I mean, you know, life threatening. This is the, this is the public's question, I think. And I often think it. I'm like, yo, like, how do your parents let you get away with it? How does that happen? Mm. How does how does this become trivialised to them? How what do your family think of it? Uh, my family hated it, hundred percent. They absolutely hated it to the point where they wouldn't let me have a house key. Uh, my paint was stashed all around the local area in bushes, in <laughs> fucking on the side of tracks. <laughs> you know, um, you know. I, I used to have to try and get as much paint off my hands as possible. <laughs> For me, graph-wise, I would have been a hundred times more prolific if my parents weren't the way that they were. I know it sounds harsh, but they were right to be like that. Because your kid, yeah. you know, when you're a little kid, 13, 14, 15 or whatever, you know, out on train train mm-hmm. tracks, you mm-hmm. know, breaking into yards, what these bolt cutters, you yeah. know, that kind of stuff. You know, you get it. But, you know, once you reach a certain age, you go, do you know what, this guy is dedicated to his craft. He's going to do it. Just like if someone is going to take certain drugs, if someone's going to, you know, mm. pursue music instead of mm. going and down the other route, you know, the yeah. normal or, you know, other sort of like traditional educational yeah. routes, you know, and you just have to support them. Do you know what I mean? To a certain extent, you still don't like it, but you support, you know, but yeah, they did. They made it very difficult for me you know, to kind of, and it's, mm. it's kind of like, you know. Tough, isn't it? It is tough, man. Because if you've got kids yourself... You know what? Here's the other thing as well. The, the word graffiti... Oh, we ain't getting into any wanky deep debate here. Graffiti is an action. Hmm. That would be right in definition as far as the creative process of what you do. It's, it's the whole thing. Like, the art of getting to a position doing the thing at the position, the speed, like you said, the mm. recovery, how do you get the fuck out? Or better still, you've got time and you want to do like a really fucking top to bottom on a wall or on a... Mm. Do you know what I mean? There's just so many variables, so many levels, and all of it consists of, well, did I rack this paint? Oh, I wish I'd bought this paint. Mm. Or how do I get over there? Or I know how to get there, I just don't know whether I've got the time. It's just so many things that you, it's really hard to... I'm talking illegally and legally here. It's really hard to kind of pin it down as like what the art form, the main element of the art form is. Mm. It's to get your name up. That's all it is, isn't it? That's all it is, man. Do you want to be noticed? That breaks down everything. No, sorry. (laughs) Sorry, graffiti is about one thing. It's about being known for your name. That's it. And for the the debut, you probably have it with what you do. I don't know your real name, but I know you as Killer Keller. But when you shut that door and you're behind closed doors, you're living your home life, you're who you are. That's the real you. Like, mm. You have this alter ego, and that's what that's what your writing name is. And as soon as you go out that door, you're Oh, that. man, someone else. And someone else. No one at my work knows what I'm doing. And if they knew, they wouldn't fucking believe it. It's such... Really? A, yeah, man, it's such a contrast. You can kind of be more open with what you do. Um, because, yeah, yeah me, I word. can't. I, I cannot be open with what I do. I try and tell certain people that are kind of like you know I could kind of try I used to write I used to do it but they don't get it they don't get it man they don't get, don't get it. it and it's like you know it's, that's fine but it's hard to live like that do you know what I mean and it's for, anyway for me I just if I'm going to go and have this if I'm going to have this alter ego it's like me getting back into it recently it's I want you to know my name mm. My graph name. Mm. My name is Tease. I want you to know it. Mm. That's it. Bam, 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 bam. I want to put it up as much as I can. And with Instagram these days, it's even easier. I'm telling you, if Instagram was around back in the day, certain writers would just be on a higher fucking pedestal. Yeah, I think about it. 100%, man. Can I just go back to what you just said there about shutting the door? Um, Because, like, when you're... uh, I don't think I've ever experienced it. I can imagine it happens, though, particularly with graph. Um, people have a come down of something, or maybe not. I guess it's the mindset. It depends who it is. But when you shut that door, as you, and from a hard day's work or a hard day's night or whatever, you, whatever you did <laughs> back in the day, <laughs> understand? Um, is there a come down of guilt, uh, stress? Uh, Vulnerability? Is there a feeling of that wasn't really me, or it was me, but 
Oh, I feel a bit bad about it. Or is there anything like that? No. So you never ever felt in any way under threat, worried about, paranoid? Yeah, paranoia. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Yeah, that you're gonna get nicked or you've upset certain people, or whatever. Um, that hundred percent. Yeah, there's a lot of. Uh, there's a lot of negatives within graffiti, illegal graffiti anyway, 100% there is. But it's an addiction and you can't explain it. It's like heroin. For me, it's like doing what I do it is kind of like it's a release. You don't, it's like to keep it under control for 18 years and f to come back into it at this stage in my life. It's so fucking weird because when you grow with it, it's a gradual progression. But when you come out of it and go back into it as an adult, you feel it taking over your life. You feel you're not doing your work as you should be. You're not doing what you normally do at home. Your mindset when you're on that train traveling to wherever you're going, you're looking out the window thinking, I'm doing that, not rather than, oh, that's a nice piece. Do you know what I mean? Just mm. because you have an interesting graph, you're, you're, you're a fan mm. when you're not writing. Nothing gets in your way. Nothing. Nothing. It's just you have these weird skills that no one else is taught as a writer. I know how to get to that train. I know how to write on that train. I know how to, you know, cut that fence. I know how to how to get away from the police. You know, I know how to get my name up quickly. I know how to cause mayhem. I am a writer, you know, at the end of the day, you know. You just you just it's it's so weird. It's the it's the oddest feeling coming back into it at this age because you have these skills that you forgot you had and they're only relatable to graph unless you can translate it into something else. This is why I like bombing, because the bomber's mentality of more, 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 if you can translate that into another, I don't know, way, way of thinking, like your work, I don't mm. know, whatever, you're training into something, mm. or you're trying to learn something, mm. that energy that you, you have as a bomber will make you succeed in anything that you do. And I find that's the beautiful thing about graffiti. Is like, yeah, you can transfer, it's transferable mindsets isn't it that's the only transferable skill with graffiti for me it's the mindset the determination the drive you just keep going the writer is the weirdest person on the planet because they will put in thousands and thousands of hours for no financial gain mm. they will lose sleep oh, that makes them dangerous makes them in what way well there's no other reward there's nothing else there's another equivocal and maybe two because the only ones that we know on this fucking podcast is, uh, you know, beatboxing and skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Like, people do it habitually. Mm -hmm. um, they'll do it to their throat breaks. They do it to their knees break. They'll do it till they get caught and then have charged. Mm -hmm. And then that... It's the, it's the, I feel like graffiti is the last bastion of, of, of free speech mm. and, and creative... Uh, free, yeah, it's creative freedom, man. And I... I only say that from a someone just looking at it from what it, for what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hundred percent. It's a, it's a free spirit sort of mentality. It's usually for no financial gain, and the amount of hours you have to put in is just unreal. But it, you do it because and people you take love it so it. like this. Is, like you say, you learn so much, and you put to put so many. You get out what you put in. But even that, in the term of graph, and what is what you're getting out, because mm -hmm. it isn't. Anything that is a, a pliable in the physical, it's a mental, isn't it? Yeah, man. Yeah. It, it oh. makes you feel good. You know, as we get older, when you're a kid, mm -hmm. yeah, you don't have certain, you know, problems as a child. But as you get mm -hmm. older, like, one thing I've noticed with a lot of the writers that you've had on your podcast is a lot of depression that runs through writers. And I've suffered from depression. Um, and I've known a lot of people that have suffered from depression and other things. And um, you, in order to stop being to get yourself out of that depression usually if you do something that you really enjoy you know some people get into running lifting weights drawing playing a musical instrument mm. doing what you do Fishing, music, anything like that, yeah. but for some people it's graph and yeah. it's just you know it, it cures depression for some people i noticed yeah. that i noticed that i mean That's... listen man like over 100 i mean 300 plus podcasts and probably about half of them are graph yeah. there's a correlation between the arts and music and fashion and everything and I, there certainly is a correlation of um ptsd ocd depression mm -hmm. all these things graph is it's in abundance 
and the con- like you say, the conversations on the podcast alone are warrant of a, you know, a, a, of a case study. Yeah, man, hundred percent. And you know, these these guys, if you can, go, the one be- beautiful thing about graffiti is most writers start young, and if they, if if teachers at school can kind of jump on it and go, do you know what this? Because at my school, I think they started they they created a music studio with decks and like yeah. oh, microphones cool. and stuff. That was just after I left. Mm. Man, if that was around, I'm, I'm crap at MC mm-hmm. and the DJ. I wish I did that as well, but yeah. it was useless. Though. But um, yeah, um, just do something for graph as well. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm thinking. Like, like they get rid of all these hall of fames and shit. And it's like, well, mm. you know, there's places for people to go clubbing. There's places for studios for people to. And I, yeah, I mean, mm. skate parks. I remember when I was young, it's like to get a skate park funded was impossible. Mm-hmm. Like, why is it so hard for the arts to be sub- subsidized when they it's don't? True. You know what I mean? It's true, man. You know, back in the day, you used to have youth clubs in churches, and then they all went because. They kind of became a bit lame, didn't they? Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. they never really got replaced by certain things. But now they've brought in all these amazing skate parks yeah. and stuff, and kids go there, and they're, it's keeping them fit. Yeah. Keeping fit cures depression. Yeah, yeah. Skating, there you go. skating is a form of exercise, isn't it? Yeah. So, and one thing about graph is like you go to a wall and you, it's a puzzle. Mm-hmm. You've got just a huge, huge puzzle that you've got to try and figure out. Mm-hmm. That. Yeah, you say it's depression releasing. That's it, man. Not everyone can skate. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And some people are better at drawing or more interested in it. Like, I'm useless at skating. Put me on a skateboard, I'll deck in two <laughs> seconds and smack my head off the floor. I've done it twice. And it happened twice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's enough. Yeah, that's enough yeah, for me. Yeah. So I'd rather like paint a train or something. Uh, but yeah, seriously, it's, it is for me, for some people they prefer to be artistic in that way, and you know that's their thing. And mm. you know if you channel it in the right way at a young age, they're only going to progress quicker and then maybe take it down a, a work route mm. or something I don't know do you, you think know? there's a, per- a public perception of graph writers because I think and I've said this before on podcasts you know people like to watch the line they don't mm. necessarily want to be with the line because mm. I think what people perceptions of a, of a graph writer harks back to more I don't know sinister times which fair enough it still exists now mm-hmm. but I think the perception of a writer makes it quite hard for people to understand them I mean, things like this help but mm-hmm. there is a perception isn't there well, of writers, yeah, definitely, man. Um, yeah, back in the day, like, there was a lot of agginess and stuff like that, and I'm guessing there still is today. Mm. It just happens, you know, so with anything, really, even at school, you kind of get, you know, trouble between whatever, mm. the different groups and stuff. Um, but, yeah, you know, you you do kind of grow out of it and you change, you know, and mm. other people change as well. And some people, you know, coming back into graffiti, I've seen heard from people that I used to know and they've had hard times, do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's sad, you know, then you hear from other people that have had amazing stories to tell, you mm. know, it's life's life, do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, you know, go back to your question. Sorry, man, what was the main point of your question? I think, I think the main point that I'm coming to is, like, people change and people evolve and then you've got to, you've got to ask yourself at the end of it, did it, did it change my life? Has it, does it, is it me? Is that d- definably me? And without it, am I a worse person? Has graffiti changed my life in a positive? 50-50, I would say. 50-50, yeah. I mean, some things you'll never know the answer to, no matter, because it never happened, so you never mm. went down that road. Um, but yeah, I definitely made mistakes back in the day, 100%, you know. Um, Any regrets? Uh, yeah, regrets, man. There's always regrets in life. I'm, I'm telling, if you're the type of person that doesn't have regrets, you're not living, in my you're opinion. Not yeah. You're not learning. Yeah, yeah, life is all about trying, making mistakes, learning from it and moving on. And sometimes you make the wrong mistake and you pay a heavy price that will change you in a certain way. But then sometimes you're lucky and you can kind of take a step back and you know go do you know what this is tough you know but i need to learn from it and you it's mm. while you're learning it's tough and you know you come out the other side and you come out a better person and you try and teach others not to make the same mistakes that you made i think mm. that's definitely something that i've done in my life is i mean after i left graph i suffered from depression probably for about five years big time yeah and then kind of found a way to channel that energy that i had through graffiti yeah. and as i became good at my craft um people would start saying the sort of things to me like what writers used to say in terms of giving you kudos for being up or this that and the other Mm. and you kind of got it's not the same but a slight 
little buzz like that. And, you know, when you get kids coming up to you and, you know, saying, you know, I want to learn how to do this, I want to learn how to do that, and you show them little things and stuff, then you get that little bit of satisfaction from it, mm. do you know what I mean? So Bigger than a light button, that, eh? <laughs> that is um That is what life's about, is you learn from your mistakes, man. I, 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 I can't understand why some people would just, you know, like, you know, they never take that plunge to take that risk in whatever they do and if it goes wrong who gives a shit do you mm. know what i mean you're young yeah that's what you got you, you don't want to be making that mistake when you were 15 16 17 18 when you're 35 36 mm. 37 so make it while you're young it. yeah but they you teach know, you that all the time you learn from your mistakes that's what life is about yeah. it's, it all, it's all it's about you you probably we all make mistakes yeah, yeah. everyone makes mistakes there's things you look back on in life and you go do you know what? i wish i never fucking did that and you know at the time it hurts that you made that mistake big time and you have to live with that mistake for a long time mm. but eventually if you learn from it and you sort of move on in your own head the time will come where you'll get to show people you know the, the new version of yourself <sighs> do you get what i'm saying so and some people will still love mm. to hate because they can't forgive and so on and so on which is fine and as the person that might have done wrong to that person you have to accept that some people can't forgive some people, a lot of people can, man. They mm. really can. People are very forgiving. And, you know, as long as you, for, in your own head, you know, we all make mistakes, like yeah. I said, man. Like, yeah. There's a lot of people I know have been in prison and so on and that kind of stuff. They come out and, you know, might might have gone back a couple more times or whatever, a few more times, maybe some not, you know, but they come out and eventually, you know, they change and they just mm. don't recognise them anymore and they give advice to the younger generation mm. do you get what I'm saying mm. so it's important man that's what life is about mm. 100% you learn from your elders but as elders we are the elders now <laughs> do you know what I mean we it's are. the only downside yeah that it? is a downside yeah 100% <laughs> you know it is quite depressing kind of creeps up on you a little bit quick doesn't it it does man it does and you know before you know it like I quit graph really when I was like around 18 19 you know and I've stopped for 18 years and that's my whole life again. So if I, I'm coming back into graph again, imagine if I start writing for another 18 years now with this mindset, you know, you'd start teaching, training, not yeah, training. teaching people. You've got, you got to pass down knowledge, man. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we all make mistakes, man. You've got to learn from it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. You know, and, and teach others, you know. With, um, yeah, with, with your session, I'm going to just move very briefly into another subject because just going back to the way the world is. And people that go through depression and suffer, and graffiti is the the, the, the the remedy. They don't necessarily have had to been into graffiti as a kid. It's just this thing now is it helps them through something. Well, there's an argument in it that, you know, places like Old Street Shoreditch, Brick Lane, you know, these are destination spots. These are places where that run the you know, holiday resort spots of hot mm. places to go when you're in town. Um, and there's a, there's a tourist, there's a commodity there. There's, there's things that, you know, that have been paved the way by the likes of Elk and Ein and, you know, Banksy and, you know, Robbo. And, you know, mm -hmm. these, 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 these history spots, it brings in a lot of money. And I'm, I'm guessing it, it costs a lot for graph to be removed and shit but then there's other areas i don't know it's so contradictory because you also they there's it's also a tourist thing as well it's it's old street wouldn't be what old street is if it wasn't for that artistic history i've never been to old street since it's changed um mm. in graph terms <laughs> that's yeah. mad i know yeah. people keep telling me you just walk out the, you know down the street yeah. and there's just graph everywhere yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, shoreditch and hoxton all yeah there. yeah 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 which is cool and i yeah it's it's wicked but for me it's definitely i love the legal side of graph and i'm i'm practicing my craft now i want to get to a certain level where i'm competent at doing a fucking amazing piece it's yeah. gonna take a while because i'm yeah. just starting out now really um but for me the you know graffiti only has that buzz if the authorities want to fit want to stop it. it for me that's what it's about yeah. it's just that being against the system but that's what this podcast is about because you know the cosign of of street art quote unquote is pretty much the reputation that was before it mm -hmm. do you know what I mean like you can't street art isn't risky they can't. You can't. You can't have street art without that hardcore site. It doesn't hold weight. Mm 
Mm-hmm. I think it's two different things, man. I, I really do, and I, I I love both sides. I genuinely do. Um, I want to be good at the street art side now, and I'm older because mm. I, I've got a kid now, and I want to be able to show him. I was having this conversation with someone the other day, and when I talk to non-writers about graph, and they go, oh, have you got any pictures? And I go, yeah, 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 look, this is me fucking up this station. This is me fucking up that train. <laughs> All in hindsight, of course. <laughs> Thank is, you. So, yeah. And then it's like, you know, and then you, you might pass through someone else's piece, and they go, oh, that's nice. You know, like, oh, I didn't do that one. Do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? But now I want to start having those things in my collection, because I've got the skills. Mm-hmm. just need to practice it, but it takes time. Mm-hmm. You know, so that's why I like the street art side but then I also love if you're a bomber you're a bomber man you just can't shake it it's, it's just... mad to think that you were, you were underage when you were graffiting before mm. you know what I mean then all of your 20s into your 30s mm-hmm. and you've come back 18 years later mm-hmm. what a transformation of graffiti landscape you're mm-hmm. in. Yeah, man. You have to learn like new can techniques and stuff because of the, the pressures and the, the yes. caps. And the... <laughs> <laughs> yes, man. Fucking caps. When I started, I think Montana was the only paint yeah, brand out yeah, and yeah. then Belton just came out. Belton was the shit. Yeah. I came back on the scene. I went down to a graph park somewhere and there was a writer there called Acros. Oh yeah, yeah. hold tight. Yeah, I know him. he's a, fucking. He's sick. a bad man. Big up. Yeah, yeah, big up, man. He's fucking awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and um, he was going on about this new paint loop, and I was like, all oh, right, okay. Mm-hmm. And I was me with all my belt and stuff, beast. and felt on his shit now compared mm-hmm. to that paint. And it's, it's just the amount of caps, certain caps that went on certain things. You know, I go there generally with like fat caps, yeah. and now you've got all these skinny caps and stuff, and you can get better. But then yeah. you think about how did writers do it back in the day? You know, with the caps that they had, like in the early nineties. I think 90s. that was more creative. I used to. When I think about that and people tell me the stories about what we used to do, I'd say, yeah, sign me up. That sounds amazing. Like mm. making colours that way or yeah. stealing certain caps to make that sort mm. of... Oh, yes, yeah, man, that's, a, they, you, that's like, that's like a, a plumber with a toolkit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, certain skills, man. You know, I heard stories about paper writers mixing colours together to make certain colours, yeah. you know, caps of like certain tins, you know, that would fit certain tins. Amazing. Amazing. But now you've just got so much. And I think it really is too much. I think you just, you guys, you see like the loop paint and then you see the colours next to each other on yeah, the rack yeah. and they're so similar. Yeah, you know, yeah, whereas yeah. back in the day you had plastic coat decoratives, you had... And you used to um, think about your shit. You had to think about it, didn't you? Yeah, right? you only had like eight or Figures. nine, ten colours in decoratives, man. Yeah. And you know, the the rare ones are like pomegranate and I think there was one called mint. They were proper rare, to, to, hard to get. I've heard that. I've heard that a couple of times. Yeah, before. Hunter Green and Daffodil Yellow, I think it was. They were pretty bad. Uh, and then to outline, you had to have Underbody Seal. That was that was the main one. Or Wax Oil or Stone Chip. You know, anything else was fucking hard to write with. I fucking you know? love that you remember the names. Oh, I love it, man. You know, <laughs> all these years I ain't been writing, I go into Halfords to get something from a car or something like yeah. that, yeah. I always have to walk down. It's, an, it's like a fucking magnet. Mm. I, I don't, I'm not interested in the paint or anything, yeah. And I just go, I find myself down that aisle with the underbody seal and I'm looking yeah. at it, I was like, shit, man, there's six tins. <laughs> you know, in London, in London, yeah, they were always, you were lucky to see one. They yeah. might have put a few out, yeah, and they're always down that aisle with the with the door with the, the glass you couldn't see through and if they were there you didn't give a shit you you had to yeah. have them because they were so hard to get because writers used to be on it uh, but they were usually always empty it was never any underbody silver but now even now I walk into when I wasn't writing walk into Halfords straight down that aisle without even thinking look on the bottom shelf underbody so shit there's six tins there Fuck. and then you're like I don't write anymore you know what that reminds <laughs> me of you know only fools and horses when they win the, the land for, you know they sell the timepiece and they go back yeah. to the old flat and he picks up the phone as if like he's still in business yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that it's that it's that so that, habitual yes that's exactly what it was like <laughs> you walk down that aisle. I'm sorry we're, out, we're not we're not trading anymore yeah exactly you're shit. not a writer anymore man let it go you know just yeah. get your windscreen wiper and walk out the shop yeah. <laughs> or your litre of oil but yeah. I tell you man like I think a lot of people this will resonate and I think more importantly there's a lot of young people that watch the show you know big up big up all the heads that watch especially out of town out of country um, that, that really will pick up some knowledge on this one episode and I think also bro like I've got to give it to you for being honest you know no you, worries, you really have Drop some science today. Thank you, man. You know what I'm saying? Any shout outs? Anyone you want to shout out? Shout outs, definitely Rust, man. Rust <laughs> is uh you know, someone that just has not changed since the day I met him. He's he's yeah, always he really helped me out big time back in the day. Big up Ticker always, as well. Yeah, yeah um, yes, yes. sort of helped my re entry into this world. And yeah, I've known him a long time mm. and 
Yeah, yeah, he's been through some stuff as well, but he's just it's the safest guy, honestly. Mm. Big, big him up all day Lovely long. bloke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and well, all the old heads, all the all the all the writers that you know got me into graph that I've mentioned throughout this podcast, all the DDS writers, hundred percent. You know, they were mm. my idols growing up. And yeah, big up got to um, mm. rest in peace. Um, asset as well, rest, rest in, in peace. peace big asset, up panic, yeah. acros. Yeah. Um, oh, God, so many people, man, to mention, man. Mm. But yeah, whoever knows on. me, man, the pressure's on. Anyone that, um, yeah, I've crossed paths with, pass with mm. big you all up, man. Tease in the house, there you go. For those of you who don't know, now you know, all right. <laughs> and I think the big moral of the story is to stay safe out there, whatever it is you're getting up to. Do you know what I mean? Just uh, be safe, don't talk to anyone, I wouldn't, and stay lucky, all right. Thank you, Tease. <laughs> Thank you, my brother. Nice one, man. Be safe, people. Peace. How juicy is this? That's juicy enough. Right, tell me when you're ready. <laughs>